Hey guys, it's Chris at Highline Guitars. You're watching another one of my YouTube guitar building videos. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I hope that by the end of this video, I'll have earned the honor and privilege of your subscription. In today's video, I'm going to be covering part two of my hollow body slash solid body guitar build. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain in a little bit more detail how I am going to carve those two components, the, the, the solid body as well as the hollow body, out of a single big slab of wood. So I'm going to bring in closer on my computer and I'm going to show you how I'm going to prepare these files to cut the parts on my CNC machine. Okay, so what you see here on the screen is a file that I have set up in Adobe Illustrator. And this is full size, full scale. Now, whenever I talk about the process that I follow for building guitars using CNC, people will always ask, why do I follow this process? Why am I creating 2D files in Adobe Illustrator, then bring them into Rhinoceros 3D to build the models, and then importing those into MeshCam to create my tool paths? Well, the reason is simple. Um, first of all, I'm building guitars. Sometimes I make other woodworking projects, but I'm not making rocket engines for the next uh, lunar mission <laughs> or the next mission to Mars or the first mission to Mars. No, I'm just building simple items with my CNC, nothing really complicated. I could easily purchase, and I do have a copy of Fusion 360 on my computer, and I've also used SolidWorks in the past, but those programs are not only really expensive, they're massive overkill for what I need. My process only needs to be pretty simple. So what I like to do is create a top-down, full-size, full-scale, two-dimensional drawing in Adobe Illustrator. And I use Illustrator because I have the Adobe Creative Suite, and I use that for a lot of other projects that I'm involved in. So it makes sense to me to use Adobe Illustrator because I can create what you see on the screen right now in just a matter of minutes. It, it, I can do it very quickly. In fact, I can create these 2D files much faster in Illustrator than I can create them in my 3D programs like Rhinoceros 3D. It's just much faster. And then once I have these files, I can then import the shapes into my Rhinoceros 3D and extrude them into the models that I'm going to need for developing my tool paths in MeshCam later on. But what you see here on the screen, I've, I've actually color coded this. Typically, the, uh, the work I do is in black and white, so it's something like this. But I've decided to do it, color code it so that you could kind of see and get a better idea of what I'm trying to do here. The kind of light reddish tan color that is in the background, that represents the blank which is going to be 22 inches long, 18 inches wide. And even though this is two dimensional, it will be eventually one and three quarter inches thick. Then when you look inside here, you'll see all these different color coded shapes. The blue, light blue color represents the space between the blank and the hollow body shape, which is the red that you see here. Now that's going to be the hollow body sides the red color. So the blue represents the space between the hollow body sides and the outer blank, as well as between the hollow body sides and this green color shape, which is the solid body guitar that's going to be cut out of the inside. So then I have these black shapes, which represent the pockets for the neck and the pickups, as well as the control cavity. But this is only for the solid body design because I can do all this carving operation at the same time. Later on, I'm going to do the neck pocket and pickup pockets for the hollow body, but that's going to be separate because that's going to be in cut into the top, which is a whole different uh, process. And I'll be explaining that in a future video. And then you can see this kind of dark gray around the control cavity, that represents the recess because I want the lid for the control cavity on the back to be recessed so that it's flush with the back of the body. And then these three white circles represent the holes for the controls 
Two of them are for pots. One is a volume, one is a tone, and then the other is going to be for a three-way toggle switch. Then you see these inline holes here behind the bridge po uh, pickup pocket, and those are for mounting the bridge. And I'm going to be using a hip shot uh, hardtail bridge for this. And the three holes at the back, those are for mounting the bridge, and they'll be drilled about an inch deep into the body. These are pilot holes. Then the six black circles that are in line next to the mounting circles, these are for the string through uh, holes. So these will be drilled all the way through the body. Then I have a, a dark and then a light circle around each one, uh, each one of these string through holes. The light gray circle is for the body of a string through ferrule that's going to be pressed into the back of the guitar. The dark circle is for the lip of the ferrule because I want the ferrules mounted flush into the back of the body. So that's what those represent. So now what I'll do is I'm going to take you into Rhinoceros 3D and show you what I've done to create the files that I'll be using for the cam portion of the process. All right, so here we are in Rhinoceros 7. And I'm working on a Macintosh. This is the shapes that I created based on what I just showed you in those Illustrator drawings. So I have this outer shape, which is the blank itself. Then I have this shape here, which represents the sides of the hollow body. Then I have the center, which shows the solid body. And the solid body is actually fairly complete because I have the body itself. I have the pockets for the uh, mounting the neck, the pickups. I also have the control cavity in the back. And then I have the holes for mounting the bridge as well as the string through holes. And that also includes, if I zoom in here, the holes for installing the string through ferrules into the back. And I've also included a portion which will allow me to recess those ferrules into the body so that they're flush with the back and they're not sticking, sticking out. So it's pretty straightforward as far as how I've got this set up to be carved. Now, one thing you'll also notice if you look carefully is I have these tabs which extend between the body, the solid body, the hollow body sides, and then the blank. And the purpose of those is to keep everything locked into position as I'm carving it with the CNC machine. If I didn't have those tabs, once the bit cut through to the other side, the back side, then each part would become loose and liberated from the blank and with a, a CNC router spinning at about 16 to 20,000 RPM, that would cause these parts to fly all over the, the CNC machine and would destroy them. So they have to be locked together with those tabs. And then once I have finished with all the carving operations, I can remove the blank with these three parts or two parts. And then I can then manually cut through those tabs to liberate each part. And then I have to clean them up, uh, get everything sanded smooth. So that is basically how I have the 3D set up. Now we're going to jump into MeshCam, and I'll show you how I'm going to do the carving operation on my CNC machine with the tool path that I'm going to select for it. Hey guys, if you're enjoying this video or any of the videos that I produce on my Highline Guitars YouTube channel, I would appreciate it if you might consider helping to support my channel. There's a couple of ways you can do it. You can click the subscribe button down below. You can also click the join or the subscribe plus button. And when you do that, you can become a member of the channel. And when you're a member, you're going to have access to my members only videos which are versions of all the videos that I make that contain a lot more information and detail than what I normally include in the videos that the general public gets to watch. Also, you can visit my eGuitar Plans website or my Highland Guitars merch store, and any purchase you make there is going to help support the channel so I can keep making these videos and sharing my knowledge and experience with you. And then, of course, if you want to keep it simple, you can click the thanks button down below and leave a small tip in the amount that you think is fair. And of course, 
at the very least, if you'd like to help support this channel and not spend any money at all, please consider clicking that thumbs up button down below. Now let's get back to the video. Now we're in mesh cam. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load the STL file that I exported from Rhinoceros. And this is what that file looks like. So I will open that up. And the file was set up in inches. So I have to make sure I select inches. If I select millimeters, it comes in really tiny. <laughs> and that, that obviously wouldn't work. And so this is how the body imports into it. And I don't have to make any other adjustments here. So I can just hit OK. Now, in truth, there's going to be multiple carving operations that I'm going to set up from mesh cam. And I'm only going to show you just the basic uh, carving operation for this. Later on in a future episode, I'm going to show in more detail each of the carving operations that will be performed to achieve what I'm trying to achieve here with these two designs. But rather than going into that detail now, I think it would make more sense to do that later on as I'm setting up all the files and actually getting them ready for the CNC work. So what I need to do now is very simply, as I need to establish a tool path for carving out these shapes. Now, because of the way MeshCam works, what I want to do is I want to tell it where I want the carving operation to occur, which is obviously going to be in the center area where the body shapes are and the pockets and all that. However, MeshCam is going to want to also carve the sides of the blank itself, which I don't need it to do. So I'm going to go onto the left side of the screen here where it says machine regions, and I'm going to click edit. And then I'm going to select a region type. And this upper selection, that is where you want the machine to carve inside of those shapes. The lower one is the exact opposite. You would use this to tell it not to carve in a certain area. But for this one, I want to tell it to carve just inside of that blank so that it won't carve the outside. So I've drawn this pink box around sort of encompassing these shapes. And that's going to tell it as I assign the tool path just to cut inside that, that area and not the sides. So I'm going to select a roughing tool path. And the tool I'm using is a quarter inch diameter two flute spiral upcut end mill. It has a flute length of two inches. It's a fairly long bit. So that's the one I've selected. And the feed rate automatically fills in 150 inches per minute. Plunge rate is 20 inches per minute. And then the RPM of the spindle is set to 16,000 RPM. The step over, which is how far the bit moves over to the side with each pass, is 40% of the bit's diameter. The step down is the depth of each pass. And in this case, it's the same diameter as the bit, which is a quarter of an inch. Stock to leave is what you would do if you were going to do finishing operations to get a really smooth surface. I don't plan to do that with this because I'm just doing a rough pocketing operation, basically. So I'm going to set that to zero. The default is that uh, three, th or three one hundredths of an inch. Um, the type of cutting. Now, I could do a 2D roughing carve. However, it doesn't really work with this because the tabs that I've included are rounded. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it 3D roughing. And then for the tool path shape, you can do parallel or contour offset. Parallel means the bit's going to move back and forth. But I don't want that around for the shapes because the shapes are curved. So I'm going to do a contour and that way the bit just follows the contour shape that it's carving. Mill direction is climb. You have climb and conventional. Um, I set it for climb. Uh, that seems to work the best, and it, um, there's, there's less tear out uh, where I have end grain and that sort of thing. And then I'm going to select a ramp, 
And that means the bit is going to be introduced into the wood at an angle. It doesn't just plunge straight down into the wood. It gradually uh, de uh, descends along a ramp shape. And my ramp angle is 20 degrees. I can make that shorter or longer, whatever. But 20 is the default, so I just keep it at that, and it seems to work fine. So then I'll click OK. And over on the left side, you can see it's added the roughing operation. You know, I can add more cutting operations and different types of finishing operations, but I'm keeping this really simple for this particular uh, project because I, I don't really need there to be a lot of finishing passes or anything like that for this, this particular uh, situation. Now, when I do the top, which is going to have a carved contour, then I will do finishing passes, and you'll see how I set that up later on. So then I'm going to click calculate tool paths. And what that's going to do is it's going to mathematically solve for the tool path based on the bit and the feeds and speeds and everything that I just um, programmed in with the roughing operation. And now you can see how the tool path is going to work. And the green lines are the movement of the bit as the CNC machine is carving it. And the total time it's going to take to cut out these two shapes from that blank is about 28.8 minutes. So about 30 minutes, about half an hour. But as you can see, it's not going to cut the holes for mounting the bridge and the string through holes because that's a different size bit. It's only an eighth of an inch in diameter. So that's going to be a different cutting operation. But I'll, I'll show you these different carving operations in a future episode. But that's basically very quickly, in a nutshell, how this carving operation will progress. So then what I would do is I would hit Save Setup. And for my CNC machine, I use Basic G-Code Inch. And that's the processor, the post-processor that it uses. And that's how they're, it's going to write the G-Code file. So I click OK. And now it's going to save it into the same file that I've kept all my elements that I've created for doing all this work. And I'll just call it two body design just to keep everything simple. And this will be a .nc, which is the G code file. Now, as you can see, I've already done this before. Uh, it was part of my rehearsal for this video. So I'll just replace it and it writes it. So now I have that G code and I can send that G code to my CNC machine and start carving the body. But that's going to happen later on because as you will see, when I set up all these different cutting processes, there's going to be actually for the body itself, there's probably going to be, um, I would say, at least three different carving operations. The one you see here for the perimeter and the pockets, a separate one for drilling the holes for mounting the bridge, and then on the back side is going to be making the control cavity as well as the holes for the string through ferrules. So multiple operations. Uh, but I don't expect it would take more than 45 minutes to do all this work. We'll see. Okay, so that's a brief overview of how I'm going to cut out these components to make the two different bodies. And in the next episode, I'm going to talk about how I'm going to make the top and the back for the hollow body guitar. That's going to be a carved top operation. So it's going to have a shape that's very similar to what you see in like a Gibson uh, ES series guitar. So um, I would encourage you to check that out. It's, it's a little bit different than what you've just seen me do. It's mostly going to be done in rhinoceros. Uh, and then beyond that, I will do a, an episode where I focus on how I'm going to make the necks because there'll be two different necks for these guitars. So I would encourage you to keep watching as uh, this project continues on. As always, um, visit my eGuitar Plans web store, uh, my Highline Guitars merch store. Uh, click the thanks button, leave a tip in the amount that you think is fair. And at the very least, if you want to help support this channel but not spend any money, click the thumbs up button. It really does help. Uh, at any rate, take care, stay safe, and I hope you'll be back for more guitar building videos.